Hey everybody, welcome back to Art Shop with John Ross Palmer. We're here in Houston at his lovely gallery and studio and home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything. Everything. This is what, Command Central, right? Command Central. Absolutely. How are you doing? I'm good, John good, Bishop. Good. good to see you. It feels like spring out. It, it does, and I love the, um, not just the temperature, but the wind has been beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect day in Houston. And I know it's becoming springtime because my seasonal allergies are killing me. Uh, I was, you know, I think, <laughs> This time of year, but then I think the wind today too yeah. like gets things all kicked up and in the nose. They're gonna cut hay one day and yeah. I'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things I want to talk to you a little bit about today is what's going on with you and this thing with Barbara Bush's Literacy Foundation. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, I would love to. So, um, this year, 2024, is going to be the 30th anniversary of the Barbara Bush Celebration of Literacy wow. event. It's going to be at the Hobby Center downtown Houston, mm -hmm. wow. April 9th. And um, the board has asked me to create some artwork to coincide with the celebration. And a uh, concept that, there's many things that are gonna be in this one piece that I'm creating, but there's a thing called the butterfly effect. Sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. And In you know, case people don't know, could you tell them? You tell better, because I just learned uh, about it. So I don't know the exact difference. I was gonna say, I haven't rehearsed this one, but the butterfly effect, as I understand it, is the, the notion that some small thing mm -hmm. that happened ages and ages ago can have ripple effects into the future. Yeah. And so very, very minor change can make a monumental difference mm -hmm. in the way things evolve or change or develop over time. Sure. That I had to do. <laughs> That's it. I mean, because... So look it up and tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have an email right now. You are off a little bit, uh, John Bishop. How no, dare you is, say this? This is about butterflies, idiot. <laughs> um, so yes, they correlate that with her, with um, her literacy campaign when I think she started that while she was still the first lady. Sure, sure. And just how that has blossomed into mm -hmm. office all over the United States, probably even further than just our U.S. boundaries, to promote literacy. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the, her butterfly effect is her organic idea to help people learn to read. Right. Because and what a seismic difference that oh, makes in a person's life. Because you know when you read, you don't think about you can't compete in this world if you yes. can't read. You mm -hmm. don't have rights. You can't protect yourself. And um, I think you get to some point in your life if you if you cannot read or write, then you're ashamed of it and you don't exactly. want to try. And think how much harder it's going to be to learn that. They'd be like you and I trying mm -hmm. to learn Russian, the that's, language. You let me tell you, I lived in Russia for for six years. I had no concept of the language or the alphabet, and and I would sometimes be standing under a sign, and I thought, what if that sign says "Run away"? This is danger. You're in a train track, <laughs> and I'm just smiling, standing <laughs> right. under the sign. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but I mean, and, and the the lengths that people go to mask yes. their inability to read. My gosh, with the, if they would reapply that same amount of time and effort to learning to read, they just need a, a, a platform to do it. And, and a place to feel safe yeah, to do it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is something everybody will be able to relate to if you go to Denny's, which I'm mm -hmm. sure we've all been to Denny's before the restaurant. Their menu, it has images of all the food. Yeah. And they do that for people that can't read and write to go eat there. Yeah, I want one of these. Yes, yeah. and I never knew that. And so like, um, that's a sad but beautiful, you know, to let them know what they want to order, but it shows you, you know, just really how severe the illiteracy is. You just don't think about it. You don't right. think a person that is your age cannot read or write. Mm -hmm. You assume, we all assume everybody can read and write because for most of us, we were taught that so young and we think everybody had that privilege and mm -hmm. they haven't. My first library assignment it was out in uh, New Mexico, kind mm -hmm. of in rural New Mexico. And one of my jobs was to read people's mail for them when they would come in. Oh. Uh, they didn't happen often, but there were people who would come in, I have a letter, can you tell me? And I'd have to say, yes, you have a new grandbaby, she's healthy. Uh, yeah. and, and that was just a service that was provided by the library. So there and was, that was, you know, in the in the nineties, uh, you know. Yeah, not long ago. Yeah, there was a very interesting article in the New York Times about there was this bundle of letters that was found, mm. and they were sent during like over two hundred years ago. Holy cow! And they had not been opened. 
it was during some conflict and so they never got to the recipient. Sure. So they were bundled, never been opened. So imagine it's like mm -hmm. that's never been read what was written, but they're all beautifully and written. written and, yeah. You know why? Because they hired scribes because the average person back then could not read or write. So oh, those are all professionally no. drafted letters by a professional. You went to a scribe. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So they would sit there and say, hi, honey. Mm -hmm. How's this? How's that? And I just blew my mind. It's like, Pat, then people could not read or write. The average person, you had to be wealthy to have the privilege. And See, it's like I pay people now to do my SEO. I don't even know what that means. Is that nah. a cuss word? <laughs> so um, we've come a long way. Yes. Society, yeah. which I think even makes it harder for the people that need that ability still mm -hmm. taught to them. So the Barbara Bush literacy event, it's a big celebration of what she's done. It shows mm -hmm. her butterfly effect. It's still affecting the world and, sure. and changing things. And think about all the people that now have been affected by um, her mission of people to read and well, just how, that privilege. How did the, the relationship develop between you and this, this foundation? So the first time I ever met Barbara Bush, I was 18 years old. Wow. I was at the rodeo and I heard that President and Mrs. Bush were going to be at the Stockman's Club. It was February, the rodeo time. He had just left office, so not reelected, which was a big deal. You yeah, know. yeah. And a friend of mine told me he was going to be there, so I bring my little Roloflex camera, and I'm waiting. And there's no guarantee. And then all of a sudden, you get on the loudspeaker. It's like, don't blame me. I voted for Bush, which was a big deal back during the campaign against mm -hmm. Clinton and, and um, President Bush, President Clinton and President Bush. And so he's in the room, and so I get my camera out, I went up to him, put my arm around him, can I get a photo? Definitely did it with, I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. And then I see Mrs. Bush carrying her tray of food, and I just turn around and I'm right there in her face. And I have that photo somewhere, so it's all whited out because mm -hmm. of the flash, and she's carrying her <laughs> she's tray of blinded. food. Yeah, she's already white hair, blinded by the flash. So that was the first time I met her, which I think is a special story. And then let's fast forward, you know, 20 years later, I'm mm -hmm. doing my art, and I had the ability to do stuff for President George H.W. Bush. And then through that, I got to know Mrs. Bush. And mm -hmm. um, so just from, not the flash in the eyes, <laughs> but just doing what you love, I slowly was able to build a relationship. And then uh, Claire, who was in the mentorship last year. Oh yeah. Loft. Um, she invited a lady, her name was Lisa, who's on the board of the Literacy Foundation. Uh, the foundation. And wow. You, yeah. Talk and so, about the butterfly effect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Lisa was here that day at the party, uh, being invited by um, Claire. And anyway, so I got to meet her and then she saw my relationship I had with President and Mrs. Bush and then thought, hey, let's, let's see if you can do something for this 30th anniversary. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so they contacted you. Mm hmm That is an honor. So what... <laughs> It was really cool to me. So I go there for the first meeting, like at the office, and there's like, you're in the big boardroom. Mm -hmm. This is like ground zero of her literacy. This is the Houston office, right? Sure. This is like, yeah. it's where she. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm in there with this meeting with these other board members, and it's like, agenda, John Ross Palmer. Like, and it was all about the meeting with me about mm -hmm. the art. And I thought, this is so awesome to be a full time artist and you'd be elevated by this organization right. to create something for them and for them to have trust in me that I'm going to do it right. and do do exactly. what they want mm -hmm. so during that meeting um so it, this is just like a traditional commission so i get all the ideas we brainstorm okay and so some things we're going to put in the piece i'm still mm -hmm. working on it um the basic concept is it's going to start with an open book at the bottom of the canvas okay. and the page is kind of opening up and some of the pages coming out of the book mm -hmm. and morphing into maybe a butterfly nice or one um could be the american flag within the page and then also with this, we're going to have little pearls. And then in the pearls, you might find other important things about the celebration. One, I think I'm going to put the number 30 in one of the pearls. Another one's going to be uh, the eagle, the, you uh -huh. know, the bald eagle. And there's a couple more components that we're putting together. So it's kind of a surrealistic sure. idea where you're not just going to see it and know right away that these objects and items are in there. You're going to kind of find them as you look. Mm -hmm. And one idea I think I'm gonna do is I want to do 30 special pearls in it that are different than the other ones, just for the significance of the 30. The 30th. And then the you've gotta find all 30 pearls in the piece. Mm -hmm. See if you can find all 30 pearls. Nice, yeah. nice. And I, I guess the thing that I found so amazing about this story is because I knew that you had this 
long time relationship uh, where you had painted a uh, portrait of, uh, from a photograph, I believe, of, of President Bush mm -hmm. that he had loved. And because and, I see these, you have some framed correspondence from them. Over the years, yeah. So that like, what a what a long history you've had with this yeah this family. I um, met one of his aides and found out she was a collector. Mm -hmm. I mean, her friend was a collector of my art. Yeah, and so I meet this friend named Laura Paris, who is a close friend today. Marvelous. Yeah, and um, we just had a great friendship, and we'd have lunch once a month, and we would just talk about what's going on in the world, and I. would just say, I know who your boss is. I want to do something for President Bush. And I'd do a proposal and she's like, no, he don't want to do that. And literally, I probably proposed all these different things. President Bush is left-handed. I did a thing. Oh, look, I'm going to do a portrait on left-handed people because I'm left-handed. Then it comes back from his office. Well, he's actually not left-handed, which is not true. He is left-handed. But it's just, <laughs> I was never going to get a project with him. And it's yeah. like so close to me. You're mm -hmm. a former U.S. president, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so one day I'm about to have lunch with Laura. And I had like 45 minutes before the lunch, and I just said, I'm gonna do a sketch of him with his mom. It's his favorite photo in Maine at Walker's Point. So I did the portrait of him and his mom, and it's just a graphite sketch on paper, small. I bring it to lunch, and I said, you have to give this to President Bush for me. So I'm like, I have to do something. Yeah. So I did that, she did, mm -hmm. and that was the beginning. Right. Fast forward through so many different incredible projects and one of the big highlight projects that I look back on was when it was the 20th anniversary of his library and museum sure. in Bryan mm -hmm. College Station and then they commissioned me to do a portrait of the library and then the library painting I did ended up being on all the information for the whole party oh, covered wow. the invitation all the inserts so that's the logo the yeah image. yeah and then so that was um in the fall, I mean, kind of like maybe the summer, and then I got a Christmas card from uh, President Mrs. Bush. I, I just didn't open it for whatever reason. I just got not that it's not important. Yeah, yeah. But I think Christmas Eve, I'm making, you know, I'm going through all the Christmas cards, and then they use the image for their Christmas card. I just thought that was yeah, so nice. awesome, yeah. you know. So um, just persistence and doing what you love and being around and not being pushy, but at some point, just kind of say, mm -hmm. "Hey, this is what I'm doing." Um, help me out, get this out to, you know, share this right. with somebody. And, and these are things you have no idea at the time that they would develop oh. anything, right? Oh, my good God. And yeah. how important is that for an artist? I mean, you hear a lot of times, and I've, I've gotten a lot of people who come to me, you know, this is great for exposure, do this for free, and, <laughs> and all that kind of sits kind of half empty in my head because it's like, you know, i got to pay the bills. But there is there is a certain amount of truth to the fact that you need to you need to take some chances, and and you never know what's going to come from sure. what you do. And I think it's very important as an artist, first of all, what I have to say, <laughs> I love this now. It's like, oh, uh, we want you to do this for free, and yeah. we're going to promote you, and we're going to get your name out there, and we're going to make you famous. I'm like, I'm already famous. Yeah, thanks so much. I don't need to be, you know, like, because that does wear on an artist. Oh, when yeah. You're always being pulled to do something. So I think it's very important, especially when you're starting your career, or whatever age you are, but whatever you're starting to do your art or kind of want to do it more full time, is to do anything you can, mm -hmm. any event. Who cares where it is? Just get started, get it out there. But then as you evolve and go along, then you're going to be more selective and you're going right. to do events that really are going to be on your level to help you get to the next point of where you want to be. So I think it's important to do everything, but mm -hmm. then to also at some point know what's important for you to do. Right. And what's going to be a benefit. I guess another difference from what I'm hearing in this story is that this was something you initiated. This wasn't somebody who came to you and said, hey, I'm going to make you rich, do this, uh, and, and I want to use your art for my purposes. No, this was something you initiated, and this is a, a relationship you sought out. Oh, yeah. You know, and so maybe the difference is that you you take with a grain of salt all these these people who come to you asking for free things mm -hmm. and and maybe have in your head what would you like to pursue because it's either important to you or because you you think it might you know sow some seeds for later harvest yeah because you know? everything we do even when we feel like we're not doing anything is sowing some kind of future yeah. reaping good Every, or bad good or bad good or bad <laughs> and sometimes when we feel cloudy or we feel like we're not this is the point in my life Nothing is working. 
now the universe is wrong, I'm off, my life's not going well. There's still mm -hmm. things happening in that moment too. Mm -hmm. And to be aware of it and be okay with the unknown of that. Because the thing is, I think we get so consumed about what to do, what not to do. Is this going to work for me or not? Like we, they're right and wrong answers, you know? Yeah, yeah. We end up doing nothing. Yeah. Because it's a lot easier to sit on the side and judge everybody yeah. than to go out there and get in the middle of it and be criticized for making something happen. Mm -hmm. And when you're that person doing it, there's going to be things thrown, thrown at you. There's going to be criticism. But I do know if they're not criticizing you, you're doing nothing of interest. That's yes, absolutely true. Even though it hurts. Mm -hmm. But they're criticizing because they're jealous. Because right. they can't, they won't, they don't want to see you succeed. So mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to sit on the side and be like, how, who does John Bishop think he is? You know, that kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. And I always say, there's got to be people to watch my parade go by. Yeah. So get a good seat and just watch me go along because I'm going to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And I wish that for everybody and what they do to not live in so much concern of fear because the unknown is what keeps us alive, John. Mm -hmm. If we knew everything like the movie Groundhog Day, if we knew everything that was going to happen just in one day, mm -hmm. you would be suicidal. Yeah. As much as we want to know, no, you don't. It would be so boring. Right. So what do we do? Consume ourselves with things that don't matter. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too poor. I'm too rich. Things that we don't even experience that we're living in fear that haven't even happened. And you know, at this point in your life, as mm -hmm. I know, 99.9% .9 of the things that were going to be a catastrophe never happened. Right. Yeah. The catastrophes don't happen. Mm -hmm. You know? I guess we feel like we have to live in the fear of that, or they will. Have. I don't know what that dynamic is in our brain, but or, or that somehow we could control it if we. Oh, de yeah. What well, good would no one do? <laughs> I remember my um, language arts teacher in seventh grade. Her name was Gina Goulet. Oh my! And she taught me how to journal, so I started journaling mm -hmm. after her. But I remember she said one day in class, "Okay, if your destiny is you're going to get hit by a bus today, and you decide." I'm not going to do anything because I'm not going to get hit by that bus. And you're going to stay in your house. The bus is coming through the house. You know? So meaning there's some things you can't avoid. <clears throat> and chances are we're not going to be hit by a bus. But you can't live your life worried about being hit by the bus. Exactly. Or you're not yeah. even living your life. And I just should make a note for anybody out there. I don't drive a bus though. Journals are a thing that old people use to record their feelings. <laughs> Except me. <laughs> My... My teacher started journaling, and I remember I was journaling on a vacation, and my mom had some input about the journaling and uh -huh. just said, you know, put details in. Yeah. Like, so say you and I are at the beach one day, and there's a kid with a beach ball, and it has, like, little polka dots on it. You know, write in the journal the polka dot of beach ball, because mm -hmm. that triggers a lot more memories about Absolutely. that experience than just saying mm -hmm. I was at the beach in the lawn chair, and that was it. But if you put a couple visual things... It's amazing when you go back how you can kind of almost be in the, the ability to smell where you were. Exactly. Because of those little triggers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a note for you. Well, but it's not for old people. Not for, just judge not you. Be judged. Not only John for Bishop. Old oh, oh, John Bishop. I guess you're part of the church and you get to judge me. <laughs> not only old people, but old people who know how to write cursive. I'm John. <laughs> my name is, my actual, my name is John Cardinal. John Cardinal. I'm above you. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say. Yeah. Your eminence. <laughs> Thank you very much. Finally, you are anniversary. Kind of mm -hmm. I am. I needed it today. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Thank you guys so much. Hope you're having a great week and stay, uh, stay enjoying all the springtime we oh, weather gosh. wherever you live. And enjoy the pollen too. It's part of being alive. Absolutely. Because imagine if you weren't able to inhale, you'd be dead, John. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so just inhale it and enjoy it. Indeed. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching Art Shop with John Bishop, John Ross Palmer. John Bishop, John Cardinal. Keep it real. All right. See Have you a soon. great week. Bye. Bye.